Okay, so uh, let's start. So uh, welcome to um, 2019 uh, Zenoshi Lecture Series. So we're happy to have uh, Professor Haruzo um, Hida from UCLA is as our um, 2019 Zenoshi uh, lecturer. So before we start with the lectures, though, uh, let's uh, let me introduce. Well, we don't have to introduce him, but let's uh, let us the president of the Mathematical um, Society of the Republic of China give a, say a few words. Ah, thank you for the introduction and uh, uh, welcome to this uh, lecture series. And uh, every year uh, uh, after we have a committee of uh, this Zheng Rong Xu uh, lecture uh, to select uh, one uh, very distinguished uh, uh, speaker uh, all over the world and uh, give a, a special topic, topic uh, series talks. And uh, this year we are very happy and uh, very honored to have a professor Haruro Hita from UCLA uh, give a, a serious lecture here. And uh, on behalf of uh, the Smith Society of Republic of China, uh, I would like to present uh, and uh, also along with the director uh, Chen, uh, instead of the Mathematics Academy Sinica, present uh, our, our appreciation uh, to Professor Hita. Uh, and also, uh, uh, we uh, uh, prepare some uh, gifts uh, uh, from society. And I, I, uh, I hope you uh, uh, stay here and uh, everybody enjoy your lectures. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. So among his many honors, uh, he received his contribution in the Spring Prize of the uh, Society of Japan. And then last year, the uh, 
teachers and the seal type for some of the positions. And so uh, I think that uh, the point is say quickly the title of this is the first lecture. Uh, this, this structure theorems, conjectures, and the questions of the Vasala modules class and class. Thank you. So, well, I'm almost 70. My brain is dead. So uh, I'll do something very easy, I hope. And uh, um, what I am going to describe is something starting started in 19th century, quite early. Started, started from Gauss. And then a um, little more recently, the Vassawa studied this kind of things very much. It's something about a very specific field. Uh, I write Q, the rational numbers, and mu, P to the N. Um, this P is a prime. I all the time fix to make things simple, bigger than or equal to 5. And uh, um, it's kind of strange why this field is so important. Uh, it's not so clear at the beginning, but anyway, this mu p n is made of p to the n roots of unity. And usually this element I just write zeta. And uh, um, as everybody knows, I mean, at least you studied a little bit of number theory, this is this field I, I write f of n and um, um, the Galois group this is a Galois extension because any conjugate of zeta is again a p power root of unity uh, and therefore this Galois group gn is funnily enough isomorphic to the integers modulo p to the n z its multiplicative group just um, you have integer a then you have a Galois automorphism just apply Galois action then you get another p power roots of unity and that is just if this is uh, some power a of this zeta for example, if you pick a generator of this cyclic group, and this integer a is the value of this new n sigma. Well, sometimes the sigma corresponding to a, I just write it sigma a. Okay? Um, so, the, this Galois group is something very simple structure. And uh, um, I just drew a picture somehow. I have a, a diagram, Q, and then you have a F1. And then you have um, um, uh, this Fn. As you see, this is a P group times, actually, therefore, 1 plus to the, how I can say, uh, something isomorphic to z over p to the n minus 1 z. This is, I wrote additively, but this is a multiplicative group, and actually the p minus, order p minus 1 cyclic group. And uh, therefore, this f1, this gamma group is just a mu p minus 1, and then you have uh, this z over p to the n minus 1 z part of the Galois group here. Uh, and then you have a subfield qn here. This is just a product. You can take it fixed by this order p minus 1 group here. And therefore, you have a tower of field. And you take all the union. Then you get a big infinite extension here. And this Galois group is therefore isomorphic to zp. And the entirely, this is ZP cross. And this Galois group is ZP. 
this strange setting is something Ibusawa tried to study um, in his in his work. Okay, so um, what he actually wanted to study is a class group. The class group. So um, so the class group of this F n. So this is just a fractional ideals of Fn. So fractional ideals of integer ring of Fn. Integer ring is just um, this this Fn. You add all the p power roots of unity to integers, then you get an integer ring. So you don't even need to know the definition of integer ring. And then you divide it by those principal ideas. Or you can just say this if you want to something like geometrically. You are just saying all line bundles of spectrum over spectrum of this integer ring. And by you divided by isomorphism class, you get a finite group. This is a very mysterious group. We call it a class group. And um, um, something Hilbert found is that the um, I wrote right here. The Gara, th there is uh, actually some finite extension H n over F n that is maximal. Abelian, Gara group is Abelian group, maximal Abelian unlamified every FOIA extension. So it's called Hilbert class field. And this, therefore, what Hilbert kind of predicted is that this HNFN is isomorphic to um, plus group of n canonically. And um, this one, you can, if you take this geometrically, this is just a pi 1, because this is a maximal unlamified extension. So it is pi 1 of spectrum of Z, the integer ring. And this is Abelianization, maximal Abelian quotient. So this is the same thing. On the other hand, class group, if I take this, this to be, this is a just a Picard group of spectrum of Z mu p n. So this is just a it looks like very geometric. If you know uh, the theory of Riemann surface, you have um, a maximal abelian covering and lamified every fire is pi 1 abelianization. This is algebraic pi 1, but in this Riemann surface case, it's a uh, Topological pi one, and it is uh, isomorphic to a uh, finite part. Torsion part is isomorphic to p bar torsion point of basically Jacobian. It's a Picard group, uh, and this is totally geometric way you can describe. And this is what Hilbert guessed it and later proved by Artin and Takagi. <coughs> what you saw. <coughs> wanted to study is therefore these groups. So well, maybe I just write all the time in CRN. Especially he was sort of interested in, by some reason, it's P part. P is every FOIA. You take um, P silo subgroup. It's a CRN tensor over Z of ZP. It's a P silo subgroup. That I just call it CN. Okay, so this is the notation. And um, 
strangely, also uh, this year end, of course, you have a complex conjugation act. And therefore, it's uh, CN, the complex conjugation act. And then you can have a minus quotient, I mean minus eigenspace, CLN minus, where the C acts by minus one. There's a maximal quotient where you can write down CLN modulo CLN C plus one. This is a P group, and P is odd prime. It's a bigger than five. So this is actually the maximal quotient plus, plus quotient where C acts trivially and CN minus quotient. And somehow this is the target of the study of Iwasawa. Um, now, why this story is so old? I'm just recalling the formula by Dirichlet and Kumar. Actually, it seems Gauss also to some extent knew that in even 1801. Uh, this order is given by kind of explicit formula product over all characters group homomorphism from this multiplicative group into, say, complex numbers. And you insist, because I, I, I am taking minus part, complex conjugation, of course, acts on the root of unity by inverse. So it is minus one corresponds to complex conjugation. So chi minus one is minus one. The action is minus one. Over all these characters, there are a lot of such characters there. Essentially, half of the character of all character is this. And, um, uh, then you plug in minus 1 over p to the f of, say, a is 1 to p to the f of chi inverse a times a. It's uh, just this sum. You make uh, all the product over that. It's just uh, averaging the all the product you think it is not really, you don't need to put minus one here. But the reason for that is that this is just a value of Dirichlet L function at chi inverse. And by functional equation, it is explicitly related to the value at chi. This is actually related to the class number. But the use of this gives this explicit formula. Okay, this Dirichlet function uh, is just an Euler product, something like um, perhaps this is also almost everybody knows. This product over all primes converges when real part S is bigger than one and um, continues analytically homomorphically everywhere, and that's a theorem of Riemann. And uh, um, this f, f is just the kernel of chi. I wrote it is 1 to the p to the fz modulo p to the nz. This is, uh, of course, subgroup of z over p to the n z cross. So the, it, it, we call this p to the f as a conductor of chi. So it's a kind of funny formula. Y you multiply the p to the n, but obviously there's a more than p to the n characters 
there, and you are also divided by this. This is a kind of look like a fraction with big p, p denominator, and make a product somehow. You get an integer, and um, um, this is first funny miraculous formula, and so uh, Kuma sort of guessed that um, this class group. You have this is just a made of class of idea A. Then you can let Galois group act by ideas. You get the action of Galois group on class group. So it's group algebra over Z act. So uh, you make a kind of wild guess that order is given like that, so why not you just define theta n to be um, you ignore plus or minus uh, so I forget about minus a is 1 to p to the n and then this you take bigger denominator over a somehow, and this sigma a inverse. It's an element of group algebra of rational coefficient of Zn. Right? Any element here, you raise a power to this order by Lag Lagrange theorem, it's you get trivial, right? It's trivial. So if this kills this, this would perhaps kill this, this finite group, right? But you can't let it act because this is a fraction and what you can let it act is integers. So what you, you, you do stupidly, you just take SN, the you take a fractional idea in the group algebra and you take a <laughs> Z with this grouping. The point here is that Kumar's sort of uh, dream is that if this is isomorphic to this grouping modulo, this idea is so-called Stickelberger idea, because Kumar guessed it only for N1. And um, Stickelberger just extended this definition to any positive n. And um, um, if this is the case, you need the order and you need the structure, so you completely determine what it is. But unfortunately, uh, this minus part, I'm sorry, because I only pick up minus part. For plus character, this kind of formula this kind of easy formula is not there. I, it involves some transcendental factors, although formula is there. Um, and this is actually not true. Why not true? And the main point is that this only deals with minus part. And the main obstruction is plus part. Um, Somehow you need to know everything to know this. I don't know why, but this is kind of reason that this fails. And somehow, strangely, um, so this guess itself, this guess itself is basically okay. So the comma. On his way to prove, on his way to prove the Fermat's last theorem for irregular primes, he basically proved that uh, for index n equal one, and for general index it's Stickelberger. It's a golden age of German mathematics. 
proved in 1890 that this SN annihilate this year and minus. And out of that, they, they wanted to know that this is isomorphic to this. But uh, you can find very easily counterexample. Um, God shows us some favor like this, and then God gives us a very good disappointment. Okay. So, as I said, we ignore the plus part without any reason because it's not convenient. And we also ignore this denominator just taking uh, rather wildly the intersection to integers. And somehow, well, it's making things smaller, so it should annihilate. That, that perhaps works. Okay, so when the um, obstruction or plus part is zero, then it might work, right? So there's a Kuma van der Waal conjecture. I just write KVC conjecture. That's something this C1 plus is zero. Or well, maybe it's a multiplicative, I just say one. This is a P primary part of this minus part. This conjecture actually implies that if this is true, Cn plus is trivial for any n. So you, you can formulate this kind of way. Um, this is a wild conjecture also. No real heuristic reason for it. You compute, for example, Hart, Harvey, and Ong, uh, computational number theorists, well, a lot of computer scientists computed it. 2017, this is true up to 2147483648. If these three guys are number theorists, perhaps you remove eight, you change eight to seven. This is a prime up to this. This is obviously not prime. But anyway, these are computer guys. Um, they are happy to reach this. Two billion, so the, the title of the paper is that irregular primes for two billions. Um, for number theory, th this number is not too big. So uh, whether this is true or not, if you have this amount of American dollars, you are happy, but uh, uh, like Bill Gates, but <laughs> Um, number series is not too happy by that. But anyway, no, nobody found counterexample up to now. Then, Iwasawa comes. Um, So I need to a little bit perhaps speed up, or well, I extend it to two hour lecture. Um, anyway, why not you just go up to the top? So the picture is Q, Q infinity union of all QNs, and then F1 here, the Galois group mu P minus one, and F infinity. Then you have this uh, P Hilbert class field, which is whose Galois group is isomorphic to C1, and you have H infinity union of all this, uh, and this C infinity is there. Okay, C infinity is therefore projective limit of Cn because you have sigma acting on H here. You restrict it to the smaller field Hn, and in this way you get a projective system of Galois group, and you take a limit, you recover the Galois group of the union. 
this is just a p p r o f i n i t e abelian group. So the uh, once you take a limit, things could be easier. That sort of um, your server's idea. He started his business when he is uh, slightly younger than 40. He changed abruptly his subject. He was studying periodic Lie group and complex uh, uh, real Lie group up to now. Then just changed it to the number theory. Why not? It's much more interesting. Oh, there's some pe Lie group people here. I'm not saying that. Forget about it. Um, That's just stupid number theorist point of view. Okay, so the, this Z, only P group, so you, instead of base ring, you take ZP and take this Galois group of P part. So um, the, this extension is gamma. I originally wrote ZP, but this is multiplicative. This is actually 1 plus PZP, so it's a multiplicative one unit group. Of course, this is isomorphic to ZP by logarithm, but this is more natural. So the Galois group of each step is just a gamma over some gamma P to the N kind of things, because QN here in the middle is fixed by gamma P to the N because this is p to the n extension over q. So why not he takes a limit? Or in the same way, you take a zp of z over p to the n z cross, this is gn, the limit. Okay, but uh, but this is actually product of same sort of ring because z of mu p minus 1 zp is just a product of copies of zp, right? Because zp cross is gamma times group p minus 1 order prime to p group. So the, you, the idempotent, if this is a j's component, idempotent 1j, any group theorist knows this, that the sum of um, omega to the minus j sigma, sigma, something like that, so s sigma a. A is zero to A is one to P minus one. Right? I I, I mean this is a, I'm identifying this mu P minus one with Z over modulo P and the corresponding guy I'm picking up. And omega is a character. So the the new infinity is from uh, the Galois group Z infinity to zp cross and then projecting down to mu p minus 1 I just write omega and just write this also omega and that power to the j you get a j's component. Okay so this I just call it this is called the US sub algebra but this lambda is just a projective limit of polynomial ring capital T, or why not, power series ring, and uh, T to the P to the N minus 1, right? Because T is 1 plus T, and this is, of course, invertible in this power series ring by geometric series. Inverse of this is expanded. You can expand it into geometric series. And this to the power T to the N, and you just bring the generator of this guy to this T, and it is isomorphic to this. And obviously, intersection of T to the P to the N minus 1 is 0. So this is just a ZP, double bracket T, very simple, um, regular local ring. And this is a great idea. 
that this lo the simple local ring has a very nice property you can study with. And therefore, if I write this R infinity here, then this is just a product of lambda times lambda p minus component just by projecting down by this item pattern. So I I it's again very simple ring. Okay. So now I come back to this element. Okay. This theta n. So the simplest of this ring is just a one variable power series ring. And for each step here, I have theta n here. Right? So I just apply one j to just projecting down to simple guy. So this element, theta n j, it is not a n power, so I just perhaps making a bracket. And obviously by construction, the these things here, if you pick z over p to the mz cross, and you projecting down to z over p to the n z. This is a projective limit you are taking for m bigger than n. Then, by basically, by this stupid sort of definition, it look like it look like I I'm saying that perhaps you'd better forget about p n, right? But anyway, it's essentially. goes down to theta jn. And indeed, once you apply this guy, it was somehow proved that this is p integral. So it is actually belonging here. And actually, this goes this way. So um, why not you take a limit? So this is a, you need a proof because you have a stupid the denominator there, but actually it is integral. Um, you need to be fairly clever to prove this, actually. But anyway, you take a limit. Infinity. All right, this is a power series. Okay, why we, why Kuma defined this element? The point here is that you have um, you have a, then you have a character of G N, say chi, then just applying to a sigma sigma, you bring it to a sigma chi sigma, you get a complex number, and theta n essentially goes, I forgot a minus here, but essentially goes to L0 chi inverse, right? This is the construction of theta. And this is the limit of this GN ring. You can still apply just projecting this down to here, and apply chi to this element, then it goes down to this guy, and then you get the L value, right? So this theta Lj, I call it actually, it is a L function. And not just a L function, uh, it is very much related to L function. That's what I'm saying. And um, point here, is that the point here is that this power series you can easily prove by this construction that this Lj, um, when I make up things here, 
I used this to identify this with group algebra. So this T corresponding to the generator of this guy, gamma. So the gamma is generated by over Zp by single element. Everything is power of gamma by Zp, or you can take gamma if you like, 1 plus P. Well, whatever choice you can make, but just fix a one generator. Then this map chi here is just taking gamma to the chi gamma. In other words, t goes to chi gamma. This is the map. Or power series 1 plus capital T goes to chi gamma. In other words, capital T goes chi gamma minus 1. So you, you evaluate your power series at this point, you get the L value. Right? So you just plug in chi gamma minus 1, you get L0 sort of chi. Actually, uh, yeah, so that's how things go. I lost my eraser. Oh, here it is. All right. And actually, what the ESO approved is much more general that the um, L gamma to the K chi gamma. You know, gamma is the first of all element of gamma. But this is also a number, 1 plus p z p. And therefore, you can actually plug in this element as a number here in the power series. Then you get uh, essentially 1 minus k value of chi inverse omega j minus k plus 1. Ah, I'm sorry. This has to be chi inverse. I wrote chi. I, 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 I forgot that. So th this is a kind of formula for any k positive integer. And j is fixed. That, so this is so the periodic L function, j's periodic branch of periodic Riemann L function is by definition this power series gamma to the s minus 1. It's kind of stupidly simple proof. It's just ca coming from this Kumar's wild guess, and the uh, only key point is to prove this is integral, and it's compatible. Take a limit, you get a power series, you plug in this power, you get a periodic analytic function, you specialize S to integer, or even you can plug in some p power roots of unity, and you recover a complex L value. And this is very miraculous. And um, further the miracle is there. Out of this, what Iwasawa proved is that the following Iwasawa's theorem Once you take limit C infinity, take a minus part, apply 1J, so that J compatible to minus, then it is isomorphic to lambda modulo this periodic function that generates a principal idea exactly like that. And this, of course, tells you you can go back to original position, 1J, C minus n is isomorphic to now you make Zp group algebra modulo Sn, but you complete periodically here and you apply 1j. This implies this. So the Kumar's dream Iwasawa proved at least for people, assuming. 
obstruction vanishing. And we don't know any prime where obstruction is non-trivial up to now. Um, OK. So this is something, the origin of Iwasawa's main conjecture. Often nowadays written this as IMC, not International Mathematical Union. It's a Iwasawa's main conjecture. OK? Uh, and this means that um, hereafter, I write this for simplicity xj. This is a compact p finite module. It tells you that this is xj as a lambda module, because it has a lambda action, can be embedded. This he doesn't assume kvc of the product of lambda modulo some power series, finitely many, finite kernel, finite, finite core kernel, finite kernel, such that this Lj is equal to product of Fj if you take its principal idea. And the main evidence is this one. Now what I'm saying is that this is, of course, now it's a theorem of Mazer and Virus. They proved it in 1984. But this theorem of exact identity and this theorem of several um, vague point that it could be a product, now cyclic, and you have a finite error possible. It, 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 it's similar, but not exactly identical thing. And the paradigm of this, and this should be perhaps different, although this is proven without assuming anything. And Iwasawa perhaps felt that same way. OK. so. Um, so this is the, somehow he, to, to make life for mathematician by yourself so it's easier, he made this conjecture. But slightly more sort of um, harder than his cyclistic conjecture. He said that this xj is isomorphic, not several guy, lambda over ljt, like this, up to finite L. So it, it's kind of similar, but slightly more precise than this. I don't like this up to finite L thing. You can't find any example of such. OK. Now, Iwasawa made this kind of statement when he was 70. And I get closer to 70. Why not I try uh, a little bit more sort of precise thing? But before going into it, um, um, I just another conjecture for U.S. server that you see this is basically I, I, I wrote a power series but this Ljt is just some polynomial times unit. Weierstrass preparation theorem. So there's only finitely many zeros. So this guy is basically with some copies of Zp. 
Uh, actually, you could have p to the some power show up, but that is known to be zero by Ferrero and Washington, so I didn't write it down. So it is just some copy of the p if this guy is the product of linear polynomial. And um, uh, so it was somewhat conjectured in this 1987 paper in Japanese. Uh, it is in the, in the Japanese Mass Society Journal, uh, in Japanese, Sugaku. Many Taiwanese people understand Japanese. So, um, and uh, that is published. And, and all the conjecture he numbered by p times 1, p1, p2, p3, and so on. Perhaps it is a problem, not a conjecture. Then he, I don't know when, but he wrote an unpublished English paper, basically same content. I don't know when he wrote that, never published. Uh, uh, and um, um, he gave a lecture at some international conference, and for proceeding, he perhaps prepared. But somehow he decided not to prepare. And in that sense, he numbered it by C something. Oh, now it becomes sort of a conjecture. Um, I don't know why. But anyway, so this, this is one of them. The zeros of LJT is simple. OK. So why not? He goes further. Linearity. I don't say conjecture because I don't so much believe it. It's a question. OK. So if I write his paper, I number it by Q something. And he says that Lj_t is t minus some number alpha in the p times the unit. Just one zero. And um, you see, Riemann hypothesis tells you that Riemann zeta function has zeros on the very special line. Oh, this is very special line, but just one point. Uh, so, well, I don't know it's true or not, but it is true up to two billion. That number I true. Two billion. Up to some even number. Just by same people. So Hart, Harvey, and Ong, 2017. Is their paper is the irregular primes. The title is Irregular Primes Up to 2 Billion. OK, so obviously, um, cyclicity, cyclicity conjecture implies semi-simplicity. conjecture and linearity question. If you don't, um, this is about only p cyclotomic field, p power cyclotomic field. If you allow ramifications, some finite ramifications or for some other primes, then all this this is perhaps true, but um, um, the linearity not true. Lot of counterexamples. Um, so um, it's somehow very strangely uh, true in the minimal case. OK, it's three. I'm supposed to uh, give another 30 minutes, uh, my stupid stories. So. Um, 
I now interpret this xj and so on cohomologically and go on to do this business in the two-dimensional Galois representation. All right, so now I consider a Galois group, um, big one. So the point here is that there's a p minus one branches of this periodic Riemann zeta function indexed by j, as I said. So I I I it's something like you have a q and q omega. So this is splitting field of the the this is a therefore degree p minus one extension, and then you take maximal p plus finite p plus finite maximal p plus finite only p ramified extension, so unramified outside p extension I take. This Galois group, I just write round G. Okay? And um, what I consider is the functor. So you, I take complete local algebra, p profinite algebra, with residue field F. Residue field FP. So it is just a ZP. So the complete. So just say p profile net, then it's complete. Zp local ring with residue field finite field fp. This this field, you know, you you can regard omega, the gamma group to mu p minus one the p minus first root of unity, but this is isomorphic to fp cross. Or I could say this is a p minus first root of unity of p field, or the p field, Fermat's little theorem. Um, so there's a Fermat's last theorem and the Fermat's little theorem. Uh, so this one, stupid. Um, so this this composite I often write omega bar to indicate that it has a it has a values in finite field. So from this category, two sets category of sets I consider a functor f j. You plug in such an algebra, I consider all characters to A cross such that this character say chi um, is you take modulo maximal idea of A, then you get down to Fp, then you recover omega bar. So just A brings to this, you get a covariant functor. So here's one meaning of your algebra. Why this stupid power series ring one variable has a name? The reason is that, one of the reasons is that this functor is represented by Iwasawa algebra. Local, this morphism of this, the local homomorphism of ZP algebras from this lambda to A. The point here is that lambda is originally, so to speak, limit of this group, right? I, I, I can define a character from G by 
say called Kappa J. Kappa J, you plug in some element sigma. That is omega to the j's power, sigma, and class of sigma restricted to q infinity. Every such character factors through by class field theory, every chi here factors through f infinity and this modulo p condition determines modu the power j. Huh? So, so whatever you pick chi, there's a unique algebra homomorphism from zp double bracket t to a, just small t goes to this chi of gamma. And if you write this, this is group algebra thing I have already done. This I write phi, then chi will be phi composed with this universal character, kappa j. So this is a solution to this deformation problem. And so this algebra has at least one of one special meaning. Okay. All right. So I have this. Um, I have this x j. But um, I define. So I have this kappa j here, the character of g, to of the cross universal character and um, um, I just write kappa j star is gamma module Lambda Pontryag in dual is just a continuous homomorphism from lambda to QP over ZP. And let kappa acts on this. So that this kappa J star. Why this P divisible thing is necessary? Because I need to interpret every this profinite object to cohomology object. And the divisible cohomology is easier to handle, and that's the only reason. Galois module action of the star, but action is given kappa j for this. Then you define Selma group of kappa j star to be kernel of first Galois cohomology of z of kappa j star into first inertia group, this inertia subgroup at p of kappa j star, the kernel. So it's restriction, core cycle restricted to inertia is trivial, so p unramified. Right? Why you do this kind of intercohomological interpretation? Because this one need to get rid of this Iwasawa loved ZP extension, but you need to interpret it into the Galois representation uh, setting. And the modular form theory or automorphic theory is so advanced now, you have a huge amount of nice Galois representation. And you need to have some object corresponding to this, but only way of doing is to interpret homologically. Okay, so that's, that's the reason. And the point here, by this stupid definition, this is actually from induced representation. So I have, up to here, I have Q infinity here. This Galois group, I just write G infinity, right? Because P only, this only P ramified. Then, uh, it's a nice exercise 
that this is induced representation from z infinity to z of omega to dj as a module. Okay, then you can use Shapiro's lemma. Shapiro's lemma. And uh, what you get, uh, I don't put J here, but things coefficient is star. Shapiro and then actually I need to further up to F infinity. I need to do um, by Shapiro's lemma first this Selma KJ kappa J is isomorphic to kernel of H1 G infinity QP over ZP tensor omega to DJ. Iwasawa algebra disappears because this is a product of all dual, so all this kind of thing. And action is omega j, and you restrict omega j, only this survives. And this goes by Shapiro, just this very simple one. And kernel of i p, inertia group of this g infinity, and the same thing, q tensor z p tensor omega j. And further you restrict it over f infinity, omega j action disappears and you get the home of g homomorphism of xj and qp over zp. So what I wanted to say is that this guy is a Pontryagin dual of xj. So xj is Selma Kappa J Pontryagin dual. So why not we use this? This applies to any Galois representation. So there's no this Q me in appearance, I get rid of Q infinity or F infinity from my picture, but only universal character showing up. All right, so let's do the same thing for two-dimensional case. So you see enough of this kind of rather crazy conjectures. And uh, um, So start from F new form. That means a modular form, maybe cusp form. If you are number theorist, you should know this, what it is. You don't know this is some sort of complex analytic function over the uh, upper half plane with some functional equation given by weight k and um, the, this is a finite index subgroup of SL to Z. Uh, N is a positive integer. It's just a subgroup whose reduction modulo N is upper near potent. So this is just a, so this is a weight k cast form, new form, and on which there's the action of Hecke operator, so-called Tn. N is from 1, 2, 3, and so on. And the new form is just means F Tn is an eigenfunction. This is a Hecke theory. Now I switch to from the world of your server to world of Hecke. And um, um, 
out of this, you have a two-dimensional Galois representation. It is actually indexed by prime p of some finite extension generated by this eigenvalue. Okay, so um, if I uh, uh, I'm allowed to write this Q lambda, Q added all lambda TNs, and um, marvelously, it proved that this is a finite extension over Q. And you have, uh, for each, you consider the same thing for each P, you have a Galois representation now um, from Galois group of Q bar over Q into GL2 of you have an integer ring A here And you complete periodically, Gothic periodically here, you have a Galois representation like that. It's funnily enough, it's trace of uh, Gothic P, you plug in any Frobenius element at prime L, L doesn't divide P, P is a P Gothic restricted to Z is generated with by this prime P. If you choose anything like that, it's in the independent of Gothic P, and you get lambda T. Lambda T L, sorry. This is nothing to do with Gothic P runs over everywhere. It's something like new infinity depends on P, I wrote, but new infinity you plug in Frobenius L, this is a thousand unit, it's L. This L is independent of P. The same thing occurs here, but heck, I can value sure. This is a theory of Eichler similar to Lin, there. Um, so you have a Galois representation like that. And the image is often quite big, could be entire, this thing. And if you change P, essentially the splitting field is linearly disjoint over Q. You know, same trace, it look like half, but splitting field totally different. Okay? So this is modular theory. Why not I do things for this one? All right, so I just fix. But the, uh, for some reason, what I really studied, this is a two dimension, right? I studied this let this argosy P act on say real algebra two by two real algebra over a P by conjugation. Then it produces lowercase adjoint representation of RP. This is, uh, of course, two by two matrix. So this is four dimensional. And the trace of this is, of course, independent, well, because it, it's made out of this guy. Four dimension. And I, I can let it act SL2. This is made of trace zero matrix here. Trace zero condition is stable under the conjugation, so you get three-dimensional representation adjoint RP. This is 3D. And of course, there's a center here, and the things are actually trivially. Uh, and this guy is actually a trivial guy times this guy. And trivial guy is the Riemann zeta function case in a server's domain. So I get rid of it. So I just don't care about this, so never disappears. Okay, this is just a why I need to get rid of Iwasawa because he already successfully done everything. So to find my place to work over, um, 
All right. Then. I consider the functor. I pick one P. So instead of this, instead of these guys, I take splitting field of F row bar. Ruba kernel of Roba. What Roba is? Roba is you pick one Gothic P which divides Roman P, the rational prime, and pick R Gothic P. And then Roba is the, the R Gothic P modulo P, or AP. So this is. This has values in. So this Galois, I, oh, I'm sorry, I take maximal extension, maximal P profinite, and let me find out the P extension of this. Just mimic Iwasawa thing and write it the same way. Uh, of course, Q infinity is there, but I don't need it, so I just don't care. So I don't need this definition. Okay? I need to assume one thing. I don't like to have too much ramification here, so I suppose for the moment um, L not equal to P has ramification index prime to p in this finite extension of rho bar over q. Why this is finite? Because this is g to gl2 of some finite field, finite extension of fp. I mean residue field of a cos And th this is basically for simplicity, but you also see that why I, ca I can actually make this kind of assumption. Um, uh, uh, this assumption is not really necessary, but... Uh, all right. And I assume one thing, that rho bar restricted to the composition group at P So that is just a Galois group of essentially QP bar over QP, periodic Galois group. It's a essentially subgroup of this. Is is, is apart up to conjugation upper triangular epsilon bar zero delta bar star, because this Galois group is soluble. This is often this often happens. And I assume that this is unramified. This I call ordinality condition. When the elliptic curve has an ordinary good reduction, its order P point Galois representation has this shape. Okay, so. I change everything now to GL2 version. This is now I call low. Low modulo maximal ideal is isomorphic to low bar and again ordinality. This unramified, something like that. Okay. Now the catch is that it's not lambda. 
and now this becomes W with vector ring. So W is a um, finite extension of ZP and ramified. So it's a discrete variation ring. It's maximal ideal you divide, you recover this F. This is a unique such algebra exists. So it is a complete local people finite ring, people finite W algebra with residue field given F. And then the, here's a Mazars theorem that there is a universal ring there and a universal representation. Ah, I forgot. This modulo isomorphism. Uh, law of G to GL to R such that I need to replace everything to uh, R such that this is law composed phi you recover this law up to isomorphism. Okay. All right. And um, interesting point, I, I forgot one condition here. Epsilon bar is different from delta bar. And I forgot that also here. Delta mod maximal ideal of A is delta bar. Okay, so that's condition we put. So this is ordinary deformation ring. I have a replacement of your sub algebra. And what I'm saying is that under this condition, um, I started from one modular form F. So this modular form has eigenvalue lambda at the end. A lot of others, G, new form like that, level N, um, such that GTN is lambda prime TN G. And I collect span of all G such that lambda congruent to lambda prime modulo prime p um, so I, I actually need to fix qp bar and it has a discrete variation in algebraic closure of w and there's a maximal idea maybe I just write m bar There's a huge static periodic banner space there. And you have a Hecke operator Tn acting. Okay? And um, um, then I consider the algebra. Algebra round T topologically generated over all Hecke operators. over acting on this span. And um, kindly enough that I am introduced, I had some relation to Taylor Wiles Fermat last year <laughs> proof. And this is, I introduced this. And uh, I proved that this is a naturally a lambda module, your sub algebra, and it is free of finite rank of lambda. Old theorem of mine, 1986. And this key point of Fermat last theorem thing is that Taylor virus proved this R is canonically isomorphic to T. So this is automorphic, and T has a Galois representation like this. And so I hear after, instead of law, I just write law T. I just write this to be T like this. Okay? And this trace 
of rho t, you plug in Frobenius of L, you recover this Tn operator in this huge periodic Banach space. Okay, so that's how things go. I almost run out of time, but then I introduce the Selma group. You already saw this well. So the Selma adjoint law, I just pick law in F. Oh, there's no, I should have replaced this law bar here. Uh, and this is F of A, I just write. Um, this F, A, the deformation, I just pick one. Then I consider this adjoint row Galolip three dimensional thing, but I tensor over A to A Pontryag in dual to make it um, P divisible. So this add row star. So this is just a um, kernel of H1 of G add row star. In the Iwasawa's case, uh, he just imposed a ramifiedness to, um, but it's slightly different. This is a ramified guy, so this, like Iwasawa, it's inertia, it is trivial. But this guy ramifies, so over the composition group, it would be um, upper triangular over the co-cycles, the class spanned by co-cycles, upper triangular over the composition group, and inertia group upper near potent. So this is upper triangular over the P upper near potent over IP. It's just because of this condition. This unlamified that tells you that it's trivial for this component zero. A joint is a two by two matrix trace zero action conjugation. So the funny point is that it's different from your server is that Start from law, you get three-dimensional guy. This is two-dimensional. Law is two-dimensional. Then you get a three-dimensional cohomology. All right, so what I try to prove in this lecture, at least to give a good sketch of the proof, is the following theorem. So everybody gets tired, but the last thing I perhaps state here is the theorem I am going to describe. So this is cyclistic theorem. But before that, So I started from row P, RP, coming from my cusp form F of weight K. And a some assumption. And this Selma group of adjoint RP, this side, this is a finite group, proven by uh, Taylor and wires, and this is another key point of Fermat last theorem thing, is actually given by value at one of a joint representation of this compatible system, and 
and you divide by canonical period associated to f transcendental number, perhaps, and you take its periodic absolute value. So if this is divisible by p, then it is 1 over p kind of thing. So I need to put the inverse to make it integer. And this is the formula for any p, essentially, not perhaps. Well, I just say any p. There's some condition there. So this is, um, I proved that long ago that this value is certain module called zeros congruence module. This is my result. And um, the, the what I explain tomorrow is that Mazer proved that first congruence module, this is Mazer. And um, then this two is equal by Taylor virus using some result of John Tate. Tate sir, sadly passed away. When I talked to him last year, he was quite in good shape, 94 years. OK, so this is a combination of these three things. So like, like a Kumar's class number formula, you have that kind of thing. OK, so cyclicity theorem tells you is isomorphic to T modulo some ideal A with so it is cyclic and if rho bar is irreducible over Q mu P, strangely the Wasser's P cyclotomic field shows up. This is the virus condition. A is principal generated by periodic L function. This periodic L function in T, like in Wasser's case, interpolating this value. Okay, so I almost run out of time, but perhaps a couple of minutes. Hopefully, you allow me to extend. Uh, this is the theorem I try to prove. For almost all P, I said that there's an explicit sort of set of primes I need to exclude. And uh, stupid things, for K weight bigger than 2, it is just this formula. What I'm saying is that these inside things is independent of P. And this is just an algebraic number. So those P which gives non-trivial number here, not equal to 1, is finitely many. And therefore, Selma group is just 0. So this is trivially true. So it looks like a great theorem, but basically nothing when k bigger than 2. OK? So that's the exceptional primes. All right. And uh, so in this case, almost all p, Selma group add r p is 0. OK? But um, this means, actually, I explain tomorrow, t is just lambda. So for almost all prime, t is again in a sub-algebra, regular local ring, one variable. Oh, my effort just gone. Um, however, if k is 1, so this, this case, I assumed that ramification index outside p is prime to p kind of thing. Uh, this is true for most times. And in this case, 
this formula, I didn't say that, but this is if k bigger than 2. When k is 1, this formula is not true. There's a some, there should be some factor inside. Really depends on Gothic p. So it's a periodic regulator, it is called. So that argument fails. Okay, and um, in this case, for example, if our Gothic P is induced from real quadratic field, D positive, to Q, Galois group from Q of some finite order character, then Selma group of add uh, P is infinity always. However, this is true. Okay, so Selma group appearing here, oh, I, I'm saying low T. Selma group appearing here is non-trivial all the time. So irregular prime everywhere. Okay, and um, uh, still this is true. And um, um, also, oh, under this assumpt certain assumption, I can say when it's really uh, regular, one non regular kind of thing. And um, non induced case or imaginary quadratic field, often this is non trivial but finite. Not this case often non-trivial but finite. I don't know infinitely many or not, but still this is still true. And there's uh, also the non-induced, really non-induced Galois representation like uh, icosahedral Artin representation. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, it, no, can no, no. Ivasova never made any statement of that one. And, uh, but I think that I it's a sort of periodic Riemann hypothesis. It's not a line, one point. Uh, and um, zeros of Riemann zeta, I mean, Archimedean, in pi infinitely many, but, um, meaning of individual nobody knows so that so no no uh, uh, of course if somebody finds some meaning perhaps this is easier not infinitely many <laughs> and uh, um, but the uh, difficulty of proving this kind of linearity question uh, might be similar to Riemann hypothesis kind of thing so i don't um, if I can see while I'm alive, I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> but I think semi -sim up to semi-simplicity is reasonable to try. Two and three. Two, two is awful. Three included, but I need to do something. And, uh, and perhaps I need to assume something. Two, uh, uh, th there might be some sort of ambiguous class type of thing. Uh, and I need to somehow exclude that, but I don't, can't do that very well. So two, I, I'm not sure of it, oh, under this kind of formulation. Conjecture, uh, what is the conjecture? It was our cyclicity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, under some modification, you need to remove ambiguous class.
minus form part is related to modular form, so to speak, the characters. Yeah. Plus part, you have um, plus part uh, sort of there's a formula that this is also Kuma. Uh, plus part size of CL plus N is equal to index of integer ring mu P N cross and um, uh, cyclotomic unit. So this is also a marvelous thing. And um, the slightly easier, perhaps easier version of um, Kuma Bandiva is that this quotient is therefore isomorphic to this. Then this guy is also cyclic. So the Kuma Bandiva is not, uh, I mean, it's sufficient, but not necessary. So it's a one direction thing, uh, perhaps. But this is very hard to decode. Um, because this is basically cyclic, it's just a Dirichlet unit theorem. Okay? So after applying 1J kind of thing. Yeah? So. Uh, for this also, Iwasa mentioned something in, 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 the, in the, so you, you can, this U3 paper is English, um, so you can read it in his collected work. It's only in collected works. And uh, if you can read Japanese, of course, you can try this Japanese thing, and that perhaps you can find in the library of this Sugaku uh, journal in the very old, the 80s. Well, it, they are, they, that sort of thing shows up in, in my proof. Uh, it, it's not a Kuma Bandi, but I need to calculate very well the unit, uh, Garo action on the unit. And that part is somehow related to Kuma Bandi, I think. So that I can't explain at this moment, but at the last lecture, I touch upon that. Because I need to introduce a lot of things.